Good evening and welcome to Late Night with Lynette. I'm Lynette Peterson, your host. My guest this evening is our very own representative, Jack Balcom of Merrimack. Uh, first, I'm putting a plug in for our town elections. We have our town elections on April 14th. That is a Tuesday. Polls will be open from 7 to 7 at the um, James Mastricola Upper Elementary School. Yes, I'm running for town council. I'm going for the one-year seat. There's a one-term, one-year seat available, and there's, a, there's three three-year seats available. And a good friend of mine, Mike Melzone, is running for the three-year. I ask that you'd consider the two of us when you're voting. Mike for the three-year seat, Mike Melzone, Lynette Peterson for the one-year seat. And now it's time for our Maggie moment. I tell you, our governor has a great sense of humor. Not only does she love spending money, but the things this woman comes up with just blows my mind. She thinks we should hire a chief operating officer. Governor, that's your job, hello. She's the one that's supposed to be getting things in order in the state, not hiring someone, that's what we pay her to do. If she'd spend more time in New Hampshire doing her job, instead of being in Washington, D.C., campaigning for her, the Senate seat she's running for in 2016, we wouldn't be in this problem, would we, Governor? You're not supposed to be using your current office as a stepping stone for the next office. I don't know, she's got issues. She's also trying to bring back gambling. Come on, Governor. Balancing the budget with gambling is not gonna work. We're not gonna bring in $80 million, and your own party should have convinced you of that last term. But gambling was killed last term mostly by Dems. So, we're back to the budget. And my good friend, Representative Jack Balcom. Now, last week we talked about what a cut is in the budget. You still get more than you wanted, that you got the year before, just not what you want. This time, we're talking about how agencies can restructure their spending to make cuts or non-increases less painful. If they would go after six-figure salaries, cushy pensions, and cushy benefits, get rid of the fluff, instead of cutting services, hello, it wouldn't hurt the constituents, it wouldn't hurt the taxpayers. But no, they look after themselves, and a lot of times they wanna make it as painful as they can, just so the, ta the voters vote the Republicans out of office the next term, because it's usually the Republicans that balance the budget. So Jack, what is your take on our budget? <laughs> okay. Well, uh, first of all, I, I want to let your audience know, I don't usually stay up this late. I mean, this is very <laughs> late. And when I do, I normally watch Conan, but I'm going to start uh, watching, uh, watching Lynette, well, Late th Night well, with th Lynette. Why, thank you, yeah. and welcome to the show. Absolutely. Uh, uh, first, let me go ahead and, and preface that I'm no fan of the governors either, and uh, um, I'm, very, uh, I'm very unimpressed with the way she governs. Uh, she's a very mediocre governor, and I, I would shudder to think that she would be a senator representing this great state. Um, given that, we're gonna be spending two days this, this week. This is the week of uh, May 30th. I'm sorry, March 30th. And we're gonna be spending Wednesday and possibly most of Thursday on the budget. That would be the 31st and the, well, no, the first. The first and the second. First and the second. Um, and uh, that depends on how many amendments come up. As you know, uh, we are having some growing pains with the with the budget. There was a. Um, now, well, this is the, the budget. That's the correct? size of the budget as of last Friday. As you know, we just had a vote on the eight cent uh, increase in the gasoline tax. Uh, that went nowhere. Um, the reason being is. Uh, because that affects all of your pockets. It affects the tourist industry. It affects the, the commerce, the truckers. And uh, we thought that was very inappropriate, although the uh, gasoline tax is not kept up with inflation over the years. Uh, it seemed to be a quick fix for some people. And they also pointed out that 40% 
of what's paid into the gasoline tax is, is paid by out-of-staters, which is another way besides the room and meals tax to actually tax out-of-staters. Uh, given that, though, um, they've gone back to the drawing board and they've cut up, they've um, started to paste together some other ways to save the Department of Transportation from laying off 700 people. Uh, part of that was uh, $14 million cut from the increase, not, not from the budget that they had last time, but for the increase in the uh, university systems. Now, for those of you who are crying foul, uh, they came out this week, as, as Lynette was saying, with the salary, salaries of the top people in the university system. I was very disappointed that in the top 10, uh, there were two, two coaches that were in that rather than academicians. A coach's, um, the football coach, I believe, was getting a salary of 265000 now, isn't this a part? Wasn't it a part-time position? Uh, well, the, I mean, the coach is is the coach. I right. Mean, he okay. coaches yep. whenever he has to. Right. Primarily in the football season, there is some out of season. Yeah. A season. It, uh, now, they do have some off-season work. Yeah. But two hundred thousand dollars worth. Two hundred sixty-five. Yes. Yeah. That yeah. sixty-five is important. That's a lot more than we make. Oh, hello. <laughs> the uh, chancellor was making, I believe, three hundred forty-five. That was the top salary. Right. Um, My first term, they tried doing away with the chancellor's office. I mean, really, why do they need a chancellor's office in the first place? Um, and well, the number of employees, <laughs> the number of employees in the chancellor's yeah. office. Was, just blew my mind. I couldn't believe how many people work for the chancellor. I don't have the figures now. That was my yeah. first term, so that was five years ago. But it's yeah. Besides commanding a high salary, there are a lot of perks. Yes. Uh, his own entourage. Um, well, the chancellor's position. I look at it this way: somebody has to be in charge. Mm -hmm. So somebody's in charge, and uh, given that, okay, he should have the highest salary. Um, but when you start to you start to say, uh, well, fourteen million dollars. I mean, we can't afford those cuts. We already have the highest tuition, and the kids leave with the highest debt of most university systems. Um, I, I say to you, I said we had our chance. I said, uh, you know, we had a chance to elect Walt Havenstein, who is a CEO, and dealt with a thirty billion dollar budget at BAE. He could have gone into the state budget of ten billion or eleven billion, depending on whose budget, and he could have found the waste and fraud that the university system needed. He could have also found the the uh, uh, money for the cuts that we're making to the developmentally disabled uh, citizens. And I say that because I'm on the uh, the House's uh, representative to the developmentally disabled. And we have that meeting Wednesday night, and I assume that they're going to be attacking the Republicans for uh, not funding that fully, not funding the wait list fully. And I say to them, I said, you had your chance. You had a person who was going to go into that budget and eliminate the waste and fraud from those that are collecting welfare and, and shouldn't be doing, I mean, uh, doubling up on that. Uh, people that have been deceased and they're still paying out funds. All those millions of dollars could have been retargeted for where they belong. But our governor, who is not a CEO, as she admits, and in fact, uh, I remember going to one of the debates personally because I was uh, Walt's driver, where she said, we don't need a CEO, and now she wants one. Uh, she's a failed lawyer from Massachusetts, and... Uh, that's my opinion of her, and, and as I've been up there and seeing her uh, again, uh, I was in the House before when she was a state senator, and I wasn't impressed with her then. I'm even less impressed with her, and I believe that the reason she was elected was probably because the citizens really didn't uh, do their homework and hold her accountable for her lack of leadership in her first term. Uh, her first term was not really a successful term. Not at all, especially with the budget. She came right out and was going to balance the budget with, at the time, an illegal activity in New Hampshire. 
Gambling is not legal in New Hampshire, yeah. and to get $80 million to balance her budget from an illegal activity. And a non-existent casino. Exactly. You know, what is this woman thinking? I tell you. Now, what are the voters thinking? E exactly. They had a good candidate for a governor. They had an excellent candidate, a chance in a lifetime. They yes. really did. And both times, last term, her first term in, um, who was she going against governor that term? Was it? Oh, that, that was, was Ovid, Ovid Lamontagne. Ovid Lamontagne another I, excellent choice another for governor. Another excellent choice. He knows the state. Exactly. He would have been a great leader. He knows the budget. He would not have tried yeah. passing an illegal activity Never. Uh, to balance the budget. He's much too honest. <laughs> exactly. Uh, and then this last term, Walt would have been a phenomenal. He would have really... Uh, he would have straightened out our budget like we exactly. really need. Exactly. Now, you mentioned that you were in the House before. Yes. Uh, what, what, when were you in the House the first time? Well, this is my third term over 14 years. I was in the House between 2000 and 2004. Yep. And, uh, of course, we had a Republican majority the whole time. I've never had to suffer uh, with a, a Democrat majority. And I say that quite honestly because... Uh, uh, I think that would be too frustrating for me, and I and I admire people like yourself <laughs> who were able to survive that kind of thing. And no, I was I was lucky. I had a split. My first term, we had the super majority, yeah. And then my second term, we we were definitely in the minority, and it, it was painful, yeah. definitely painful. No, now why is it so? I I, I want to let your audience know because I'm I don't know if it's been clarified. As, as clearly as this, but when the Democrats are putting together a budget, they feel that it's perfectly okay to go and borrow the money to balance the budget. Now, this is something that you would never do at home. Okay, we would like to have a boat. Let's go out and <laughs> borrow the money to, and uh, we can have a boat. We can live uh, well beyond our means. And uh, the fact that we have to pay all this interest uh, you know, has no uh, impact on our, our thought process. But you get a boat. <laughs> but we get a boat. <laughs> exactly. Now, Who right, cares how you pay for it? What was amazing is during this budget process, when I saw what they had done to go out and borrow money and the service on that debt, those are millions and millions of dollars. For example, there was one that was uh, on potholes hmm. for the roads. $14 million in service debt. Okay, here we made a big deal about giving 4.7, House Bill 563. Back to the charter schools, and that's 4.7. And these guys are borrowing, yep. and our interest is $14.7 million that could be put towards programs. Now, why? Why do they consider that balancing the budget? It's, it's fraud. It's, it's uh, counterfeit. Because they have no clue what it means to balance a budget. Her yeah. first term, she ran on the fact, and she went everywhere saying how she balanced the budget and how the state had a balanced budget. Her and Speaker Norelli, the two of them, took credit for the Bill O'Brien balanced budget. This term... Totally deceitful. Exactly. They had nothing to do with it. They scoffed. They were. She wasn't even in office when the, that budget was passed, mm -hmm. the governor anyway scoffed, no, they did not like the budget, then all of a sudden it's working, ooh, let's take credit. She's running for re-election, well now she's t going for the Senate, and now all of a sudden, ooh, it's a radical budget, and this budget they're passing now is worse than the radical yeah. Bill O'Brien budget. She's a whack job. Yeah. Governor, can you spell whack job? <laughs> I, I, I think it's very frustrating. I tell you, this was a real introduction going back up there after 10 years. I'm sure. Uh, New Hampshire has yeah. changed a lot. In when you were oh. in office, we were a nice red state. We were. Bright red. We're purple slowly. And if we don't, if Republicans don't wake yeah. up, we are slowly creeping to a blue state. That is so wrong and painful. And what it means by being a red state is our economy was going up like this. Exactly. Being a blue state means your economy goes like this. Exactly. And I, again, I don't think the voters understand that. Yeah. And, you know, the governor was also talking about, oh, well, we could fix the budget. We can get a, a state income tax. <gasps> How about a sales tax? That's what New Ham that's the beauty of New Hampshire. Yeah. You get to keep your own money. 
Well, that's the, unfortunately, that's the Democrat solution, and that's um, let's just throw more money at it. Exactly. The taxpayers have deep pockets. You all have deep pockets out there, right? You have plenty of money. You can just go to your mattress and pull out all that extra money that you have and hand it over to the state. Exactly. That's the way half of the people I meet up in Concord think. Yep. Well, they look at they look at a tax and a fee as revenue. I mean, I've had this discussion with several Democrat state reps, yeah. and they refer, well, it's revenue. I'm not going to say no to revenue. I said it's not a revenue when it's coming out of your constituent's pocket. That's a tax. Yeah. It is a tax. And by the way, I was watching your show last week, and I, <laughs> I, saw, you, I saw you dish those of us that... Uh, <laughs> that raised the marriage fee by $5, which yes, is, by the way, I did. that's in the Senate. <laughs> I want to defend myself. <laughs> and uh, again, the marriage fee was uh, raised. That was uh, House Bill 681? Something like that, yeah. House yeah. Bill 681. And basically, it would have raised the marriage tax by $5. And the average number of people that get marriage licenses, not necessarily get married, but get marriage licenses on the five-year average was 9,109, 9, okay, which would put about $45,000 into a separate account, which is the Domestic Violence Fund. Okay, my philosophy, my philosophy was not thinking, oh, this is an increase in fees. My philosophy was, if that extra five dollars is going to prevent somebody from buying a marriage license, then I think that that's a darn good idea. If five dollars is is going to make you think about getting married, you probably shouldn't be getting married in the first place. Uh, marriage is a very serious thing, and and half the people I know uh, are working on either their second one or in between marriages. So think about that. The, uh, but I'm going to throw out one stat because I love stats. Yeah. I love okay. statistics. Statistics show that domestic abuse is more prevalent in domestic unions or cohabitation than in marriage. That's so an that's interesting just a stat. statistic. That's just a stat. <laughs> well, I know a lot of people out here in Merrimack that uh, <laughs> that uh, you know have have hesitated to get married and and they're cohabitating, which. Yep. I'm not making any judgments. Yeah, uh, no, no. Judge not, lest yeah, you exactly. be judged. Yeah, exactly. But it, like you said, it's in the Senate, yeah. and hopefully our state Senate prevails and the yeah. fee is killed. But no, and thank you Actually. for thank you for <laughs> your your uh, comments and your defense. Uh, for the but for the most part, yeah. Jack is a solid vote up in the state house for Merrimack. Well, I I, I certainly. Every vote that I take, I think about how's it going to affect us here in Merrimack. Mm -hmm. And uh, we have a wonderful thing going here in Merrimack. Uh, we're in a community that, that has uh, a very good school system. We're in a community that has very good leadership in our town council. And, and I'm certainly supporting you, well, thank you from town council because we need to replace uh, the people that are leaving. And now that one year, is that... Is that to replace David? Uh, well, this is the the one year is what's the, left of uh, Town Councilman David Yakubov. That's what I thought. Right. That's and what I thought. And there's three that candidates. That was a tragedy. Yes, that was that was that was heartbreaking. Yeah. Uh, Dave was a uh, pillar to the community. He was a fine and yes. he was a fine man. Yep. Yep. Uh, now, what brought you back to the State House? Okay. Uh, what brought me back to the State House is uh, I get the I get the Daily Telegraph. Mm -hmm. I know that uh, the preference is to get the union leader, but we're more oriented towards Nashua. And I, I kept reading it every day, and, and every day I kept getting more and more discouraged. You know, where are the leaders? Where are the people up there that are supposed to be governing the state? Um, Sally and Joe back here in Merrimack, they've got to go to work every day. They've got to make a living. They've got to feed their family. They've got to worry about their school kids' education. Who's looking out for them? They depend on good people up in Concord to do the right thing, to, to research what, how, the, how their votes impact the people back here, and, and to do, do a, a, a review, a common sense review on everything that we do and how it's gonna impact us. And to me, I was so frustrated. I said, 
Where has reason gone? Very good. And last term, Merrimack did have one painful voter up in the state house. Right. Uh, Representative Grady. If there was a tax or a fee being voted on, she voted for it. She was right there with the governor. So I thank you for running and knocking Representative oh. <laughs> Grady out of the state house. Well, I've got you know I've got nothing against uh, Brenda Grady. You no, know, I yet. have nothing against her personally. Yeah, her re voting record was deplorable. <laughs> her, um, I replaced her on the school board, curiously <laughs> enough. Um, but you know the 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 votes speak for themselves. Mm -hmm. uh, the, she was getting consistently from the Liberty Caucus and the Tax Caucus and or the tax mm -hmm. organizations here, and, and she was getting D minuses. Exactly, if not an F. Yeah, I saw yeah. one of the Liberty, the Freedom, Freedom uh, uh, Caucus or or PAC. Right. Yep. Gave her a D minus, and there were only two Fs given in the whole state. Yep. Now I. I don't know if that was peer pressure on Brenda. She should not have caved into peer pressure. Nope. She was representing Merrimack, and she had a responsibility to vote to protect our liberties and to protect our economy and to pr protect our tax structure. Exactly. Yep. Your character and integrity come are very important when it well, comes to voting. Her, her character. I, I'm not. I'm not attacking her character. I'm attacking her reason. Mm. But if you're going to raise taxes on the people who got you into office, why did you run in the first place? That's right. Uh, um, no, we don't. We don't need more uh, big government, big taxes, big fee people in the state house. We need less. We need to get back to a red state. Yeah. I mean, I love the color purple, but not when it comes right. to uh, our state. I mean, the problem that I see in in well, I have to say a third of the reps that I, I meet up there, is they're worried about re-election. Exactly. Okay, you, you have to have courage to be up in the state house, mm -hmm. like yourself. You can't be afraid of being defeated in the next election. No. Now, I don't have the, the youth and vigor that Josh Moore has, okay? <laughs> but, you know, Josh is on my education committee, and I admire his convictions, and I admire his ability to say what he wants to say. And I may not always agree with Josh. Josh has uh, some younger thoughts. Um, but a lot of the times I take in what Josh says and I weigh it against what I, what I know and uh, vote accordingly. Yep. Yeah, no, I, I think Josh was, is good for Merrimack. Yeah. He's energetic and he's gonna get out there and get the younger vote. He's gonna get yeah. these younger people to register Republican, vote Republican, keep our tax dollars low. Uh, he's got a lot of energy. Um, and, and the thing I like about Josh is you can believe what he says. Exactly. He does not try to deceive anybody. No. He tells you what he believes. Uh, he has a show on, on cable TV, much exactly. like yours. Yep. And the thing that I, I watch all of the cable TV shows, you know, I, I it's not that I don't have a life, but it's, it's uh, <laughs> uh, our cable TV network has is very close to the people here, and does tell me what the heartbeat is. And uh, what I like about Josh is he honestly and truly cares. Exactly. He cares yeah. what happens. Exactly. You may it's not his future. Yeah, you may not agree with him. Yeah. Uh, like I said, I don't always agree with Josh, but. Boy, do I admire his his convictions yep. and his beliefs to to uh, be straight with everyone. And what's nice about the Merrimack uh, cable schedule, yeah. your the shows are on different times throughout the day. Um, like last night, I was watching Josh's father. Uh, he has a show on, mm -hmm. and I was waiting for one of my daughters to get home before going to bed. So after eleven o'clock last night, I was watching Josh's dad on uh, Merrimack Cable. So you never know who you're gonna see. Yeah. Uh, what, I, what I would like to do, I'd like to get into TV myself, but you know, I, there's, too much, there's so many talk shows. There's your talk show, there's Tony's talk show, there's uh, Chatting with Janine. Yeah. But you know, I'm looking for something like a Wayne's World. <laughs> you know, so, something that you, you you go ahead and you you, you go through the, uh, the cable TV and you just have to stop and listen. There you go. You know, something that's compelling, um, something that's useful information so you haven't like watched it for an hour and say, I just wasted an hour of my life. 
you know. But that's the kind of show I wish I could put on. And, I, and I'm open to ideas. If anybody out there has an idea for me to put on a show, I'd be very happy to spend the time. There you go. Yeah. Now, you're doing something informational, which is great. But, you know, I don't want to be, uh, you know, repetitious of the people like yourself that are putting this kind of and information And plus, I don't know where you would find another yeah. jacket like mine oh, for you to have a, a oh, show. I meant to comment on your jacket, Lynette, when I came <laughs> in. Your jacket is absolutely gorgeous. Oh, thank you. It kind of grows on you, doesn't it? It does. It really does. And no does. matter what I wear, it goes with the jacket. It reminds me of Genesis 39, Joseph's Coat of Many Colors. There you go. Yeah. Yes. And uh, I, I love that story. Yeah, yeah, I, I definitely don't put myself on the same pedestal as Joseph by oh, far. Know. But, uh, oh, it's an awesome story. It um, is an awesome story. Yes, one of so many brothers, and it was the favored brother, uh, yeah. dreamed about his future and was scoffed at by his uh. older brothers and father just to have that come out in the long run. Now, here's a shameless plug for the concert coming up. I'm a charter member of the Merrimack Community Chorus. And we have our concert coming up on the 18th of April at 2 o'clock at the high school. And one of the songs we're going to sing is about Joseph. Oh, very good. Yeah. Very good. Well, we have about 30 seconds left. No. I want to thank, yes, it goes, time goes by so fast. I can't fast. believe it. I want to thank you for being on my show. And folks, remember, do not forget April 14th, yes. Tuesday from 7 a.m. to 7 p.m., we have our town elections. Mike Malzone for the three year, Lynette Peterson for the one year. Get out and vote. I thank you for watching our sh my show, and I'll see you next time. Vote God bless. Pe vote Peterson. <laughs>